Welcome to Friendship Friday. My name is Mark Long, Rector of the Parish of St. Andrew in Newlands, Cape Town. I think we're in a point, or at a point right at the moment, where levels of anxiety for some are growing. Uh, some of the figures coming out recently, certainly in the Cape Metropole, suggest that there's been a 73% increase in active cases in the last short while, and that obviously impacts on hospitalization and deaths. It's something that can create an underlying anxiety in our lives and our social interactions and our willingness to walk out the front door. Well, certainly that's often true for me. The other side of the story, of course, is that some would suggest that the statistics are purely that, statistics, um, that the tests um, perhaps don't just pick up the COVID virus, but may be picking up all viruses. Um, one article I read was suggesting that some of the tests are actually only picking up on one marker instead of the tests early in the pandemic, which apparently were picking up on four markers. So yes, who does one believe? And um, conspiracy theorists uh, seem to be all around. But reality is that um, I know more people <laughs> who actually are struggling with the virus now um, than, than I have in a long time. And um, in terms of the symptoms that they're, ex that they're uh, sharing, um, quite clearly, uh, it's not just a statistic that they're experiencing. And so we do need to take uh, our safety and the safety of others um, into mind in the way we live. And I think we've been living with this for eight or nine months. We're beginning to feel um, overdone, uh, as one of my colleagues once described it, overcooked. And um, I notice more and more people are, are not wearing masks, um, taking greater chances in, in the social sphere. So just a reminder to, to keep safe and keep others safe uh, as we continue to live and, and learn how to live with this virus. There's a verse which uh, really helped uh, me at the beginning of the whole lockdown period. And uh, I realized the other day that I've I've moved away from it, but perhaps just as these renewed anxieties are growing that we need to hold on to it again. And it comes from Philippians uh, chapter 4, and specifically verse 6, although the preceding verses are important and good too, um, and maybe verse 7 is also relevant. The NRSV says, do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Uh, the New Living Translation is a little bit more colloquial and says the following, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. One of the huge challenges of living with anxiety is acknowledging it and um, seeking to live, I think, in the present. I certainly allow my mind to run into the future and I foresee all sorts of disasters that could potentially happen. Uh, but for me, often just centering myself back in the moment uh, can be a space in which I discover this peace um, that we read about in Philippians. Um, I've just been reading an article that's reflected on some of the thoughts from David Kessler. And um, it's an article that just asks the question, are we experiencing grief? And uh, David Kessler's response is, yes, we are. Um, grief in terms of loss, uh, often we, we, we obviously pick up, uh, we relate uh, grief to, to death, um, but, but loss more generally actually leads us into grief. And uh, he was just reflecting, we've, we've lost normalcy or what we, we considered to be normal prior to the, to the virus. Um, we, we fear the economic toll that lockdown and everything else will have upon our lives and the lives of those around us. Um, and for many, it's not just a fear, it's, it's a, a real experience that, that, that we're living through. Um, but with that also a loss of connection. And uh, while we live in a world in which we have opportunities to connect virtually, uh, as we are now. Um, nonetheless, uh, this is a disconnected kind of connection, <laughs> if that makes any sense. 
Um, and I've had a few interactions recently where I've just realized how deeply important and life-giving uh, person-to-person connection really is. And um, so there is the loss, there has been the loss of that as a normal experience in life for us. And so there's that. Uh, and on top of that, David Kessler says, we, we also uh, experience anticipatory grief. Uh, normally, again, it would be if, if we were given a diagnosis of cancer or someone we loved was given that, and one begins to kind of plan ahead as to what that means and, and that, that sense of, of what we are going to lose in the future. Um, and of course, this whole virus thing throws us into that space. We Our lives have been turned upside down. Um, and, and that's been a collective experience. It's not just an individual or a family or a small group experiencing that loss. It's been a global phenomenon. And so there is this grief that just hangs in the air. Um, and certainly in terms of anticipatory grief, um, a real uh, collective loss of safety um, and, and really being deeply unsure about what the future will hold for us. And so again, I come back to the passage from uh, Philippians chapter four, um, one that just really encourages us to entrust our fears for the present, for the future, to entrust the, the, the pain and the sense of loss we're carrying, to trust all of that into God's hands and um, to know that God will give us the strength that we need um, to live not only this moment, um, but tomorrow, uh, next week, next year. And that somehow in it all, we will be sustained. And I think if we look back over the last eight months, as human beings, we, we are incredibly resilient. Uh, we have adapted. Um, we have adjusted. We may not like what we've had to adapt to or adjust to, but we, we are alive. We're kicking. Uh, we're continuing to, to breathe uh, and to relate differently, yes. But um, we move forward. And for that, we, we give thanks. Uh, so maybe just to come back to David Kessler in terms of, uh, he just reminds us of the various stages of grief. Um, we go through de denial, anger, bargaining, um, sadness. Um, and perhaps you've noticed some of those emotions within you over the last while. And he says, what is important is that we should then come to acceptance. And uh, it's in that point of acceptance that we are actually able to let go and in letting go, actually just once again begin to live life. Um, and it's letting go of fear, really. Um, it's acknowledging uncertainty as a new normal, uh, a new context in which we live. And um, in the midst of all that too, and, and I think for me, this is the importance of our focus on, on drawing on God's strength, is allowing compassion to be deeply part of who we are. And uh, compassionate for those around us, those we come into contact with. Uh, I get very annoyed when I see people without masks, but to have compassion for, for just the frustrations and everything else and, and that desire just to live life normally once again. Um, compassion, a very deep gift, and I've touched on it before over these last eight months, a wonderfully deep gift uh, to really being able to embrace life in its fullness, to embrace each other in the fullness of all that we are. And so my prayer is, may we, on this Friendship Friday, know the peace of God, that deep peace of God, um, that peace that will guard our hearts and minds as we seek to live in Christ Jesus, as we seek to allow our faith uh, to sustain us, uh, to undergird us, to protect us, uh, and to guide us, and to know that God is present in it all.